Welcome back. It is Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. All right. We've got a few people in the, the stream. Like the video up, share it round. You know, we were here through the rest of the crashes. We are we're on every day live streaming and just enjoying the ride. All right. So I got a lot to get through today. As you could see, I'm looking at my other screen to see what the titles we got. Bitcoin crash reset. I got tons of stuff that I'm putting up on um, Twitter. Bitcoin bull run reset. Crypto's extreme fear. Well, we've got cryptos with extreme fear. That's on our crypto fear and greed index. I'm going to look at historically, like I put in the thumbnail, <clears throat> the thumbnail, what we can see historically speaking. Panic buying. No, I wasn't late from the surf. The surf's not looking too good out the front here. I was waiting on a coffee and then the guy next door started drilling the front of his, I can't swear at the beginning of these live streams, drilling at the front of his effing building, concrete drilling. I'm like, why? Anyway, uh, we're here now. We're going to look at that. Fear and greed. We're looking at Twitter. We're looking at the markets. But the main thing I want to have a look at, I got the video up last night, is people's comments. The comments are wild. Um so when we're looking at that in terms of the fear and the greed with the retail space, I think that tells us a lot in the mainstream of this, in the main stayer of the story. And yeah, basically I can cover off some of those comments from last night. Um, some guys get it, some guys don't. I'm going to go through uh, points here, which I think are very important to understand before we dive into anything for the new guys and I mean, new, if you're here in the last few weeks, you're here in the last few months, you're new to investing altogether. Maybe you've only started investing for the last 12 months. You know, it's still it's still a, a pretty new thing for a lot of people. <clears throat> so there's a lot of things to look at. And you might get thrown around left, right, and center by different people you listen to online because everyone has a different opinion. They're like assholes. You know, everyone's got one. And then there's a ton of opinions. That's just code word for asshole. Tons of opinions in the comment section. And I believe, and I, well, I know that people will look at titles, they'll look at headlines, and then they don't do any more delving into the, the video itself, research or anything like that. And so if you're just reading people's comments, you have no idea what the hell it is they've looked at in the past to come up with their, uh, what, with their opinion, you know? So in the comments, there's a lot of people that do that. You guys are all online live now, so you can see that. You know what's going on. In terms of the new people, if you're watching this on a replay, it's all down in the comment section, and that can really sway what people are doing with their investment portfolios, what they're doing with their uh, their crypto portfolios, what they're, they're buying, selling Bitcoin. You have no idea what time frame other people are looking at. So you've got half of the room talking about the bull run's not over. You've got the other half saying the, the bull run's over. Forget about it. Come back in four years. Uh I think both of those are incorrect, but more so the f it's over four years is more incorrect. It's not, um, I don't believe that we're going to see the cycle repeat exactly the same. It's not going to be, all right, it's over. Forget about it for four years, come back. You know, it's that's too, it's too much in your face. It's too simple. Everyone's seeing that. So if everyone's seeing it, I believe it's already done. <clears throat> As in there's opportunity. Ben Cohen has it right, I think. Yes, that's going to be on what I'm looking at today as well. So if you're just joining, look, we're only been on about three minutes. Make sure you get here and like the stream up, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Nearly at 170,000 subscribers, doing very, very well. Um, and yeah, you, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well. I'll just mention that at the beginning because I'm answering your Q&As over on Instagram. Um there's a there's a post up there on the stories. You can just go over, ask your questions. I'm answering as many as I can. Like I showed yesterday, you'll see it on my Instagram. Within 38 minutes, it was just flooded with questions. So I'm one guy doing YouTube and my own investing. So I'm getting back to as many as I can. And a lot of them are double ups. So just keep that in mind as well. So you'll see possibly something similar to your own question there. Twitter, of course, I'm sharing a lot of news over there. So join that. If you don't have Instagram, then get an account. <laughs> There's not much else I can do to help you there. I'm going over there live. Oh, sorry, Q and A's. It's all in my own time. You, you don't have to pay anything. If you can't get Instagram, I don't know how else to help you. I'm sorry. <clears throat> yes. Oh my. 
No, the Bitcoin number plate back here. It's a real number plate. It is not registered on a car. I saw someone write that in Twitter posts saying, oh, it's only six figures. And I'm like, this is what you get when you have a bunch of, uh, sorry, I'm getting a, really, a little bit rough this morning. I have, I've only had half a small coffee so far and I'm already go, go, go. Um, yeah, people on Twitter were saying it's fake because there's seven digits in it. And it's like, who are these noobs? that don't understand anything about a number plate. Like, I mean, that's, that's basic. You can have up to seven digits in a number plate. So this is what I'm talking about as well. Uh, as well, When it comes to online, anyone can say anything and it almost holds truth if someone has said something online. This is a real number plate. I've told you many, many times before, not you in particular, Jay, but guys on the stream, uh, a friend bought it before the bull run took off, off uh, another guy who was owning Bitcoin, bought it very cheap and he's going to hold it until the next peak. So if anyone wants to buy it, it's up there. It's a friend of mine's. <clears throat> Australian number plates are funny. You're waiting to buy a Ferrari. Not, no, no. I have a, I have a six month old baby. I, I'm, I'm not getting any Ferrari. Potentially you could get a, a Lamborghini, whatever they are, the one with the six seats, but, or four seats, but I don't think I'll go that far as well. I'm not that interested. Um, Maybe. Corral markets. Ah, oh, you Aussies. All right. So we got fifteen hundred online. We're doing all right. Not as massive as the uh, the the crash night. So let's let's look at what. Uh, all right. I'm going to look at these things first, and then I'll share what I think about in terms of coming up next. IKEA bookshelf. Yes, those are actually bedside stands, and I flipped them up the other way. That's how creative I am. <clears throat> Oh, I thought you were, gosh, you people. Raymond, a good line there from Benjamin Cohen, I agree. Today's, oh, I suppose it's Sunday for everyone else, whereas it's Monday for us. We've got 15 minutes until the weekly close. Were your last tweets ironic? Uh, I don't think so, maybe. Thank you for your time and dedication, really helping us through this, giving a lot of clarity and perspective. Thank you, guys. I'll chuck this one on here, see how that goes. Hopefully, we get good internet this morning, nice and fresh here on Monday morning. Drilling, sorry about that. Do I see further dip? That's what we're going to get through as well. All right, get there if you haven't already. Uh, like up the stream. Let's get it to 500 likes and let's pursue the next part of our live stream. Further in the dip, I'm going to share this screen here. This is going to give all of the details that I'm going through this morning. Bo uh, Bitcoin bull market reset. Let's share that. Bring that over. There you go. <clears throat> I want to make that. Is that big enough for you guys? There we go. Nice and big. Get rid of this. All right, how to come up with a blow. I'll keep an eye on some comments here, but at the moment I'm going through this and then we'll get onto some charts and stuff like that. My experience and reading your comments. So after reading your comments on the previous video last night, which was titled around the biggest threat to Bitcoin, that's what I see in terms of a uh, potential bull trap rally. These are just scenarios. You've got to understand when it comes to trading, and I'll get through that as well, it's different to long-term investing as well. And so I'm looking at this and how can I best protect my profits after signals have come in, right? You don't know the signals 20 million steps in advance. It's You just see them day by day and go, all right, this is telling me something. I better take action. Otherwise, I've seen it before and I'll be a fool not to take some action. And so that's what I was looking at when it comes to Bitcoin and altcoins. And uh, I think... Bitcoin is somewhere near the bottom, lowest or the best risk reward that I've seen since December, uh, meaning that the downside is a lot less than what it was at 60K. It doesn't take a genius to figure that one out, but it it does take uh, experience to understand that emotion and that feeling when you're seeing it in the market and to take action at these levels. <clears throat> Cheers, Northern New South Wales. All right. So this is how I come up with these because the amount of 
comments that were so all over the place. We need to clear up some of the chaos like I got in the description of this live stream. Um, it's it's all over the shop and we've got a ton of chaos and a ton of bad news today. And this is a particular Wyckoff uh, signal is we have not, as far as I could see on Bitcoin chart, we haven't hit the low that we saw on the 19th of May. So remember the 19th of May because that is the panic day. That's the last panic day that we saw. So let me let me have a look before I eat my words. Oh my gosh. Let's put that over there. Um, Bitcoin's at 34,400. <clears throat> 34,600. And essentially we've had, the idea here is that we had so much noise, so much bad news, so much fear, so much doubt, et cetera, et cetera, that it still has not pushed the market lower than the 19th. That's the main thing you need to know about this whole process at the moment. That just means that we are probably going to expect a bounce from here. And this is not a certain. So don't go out and just do anything that anyone says online. If you're one of those people, I wish you luck, but this is not the way to be investing. Start to look at the chart and understand that. So if you can imagine, tons of fear. Now, the low that we just saw today has not been as low as the 19th. That just shows to me that it looks like there's a lot of buying happening in Bitcoin because even after the extreme fear of today, people, how do you, how do you measure what, what the fear was? I just look at the lowest price and the lowest price on Bitcoin currently is uh, 31,111. That's from today, but from the 19th was 30,000. So I'm just looking at this, these prices on Binance. So I, I expect we'll get a, a relief rally from this point. Again, it doesn't take too many people to predict that. Uh, in that case, I suspect that the alts will rise in their USD value, potentially drop further in their BTC value. Keep that in mind. That's the difference. That's what I was talking about in yesterday's video as well. All right, back to this list here. You must know, must know. So this is the stuff to go through before we really dive into it any more. Uh, in terms of the charts and how to trade or invest, that is as well. A lot of people just call it investing, but unfortunately they end up trading. Um, your plan. I don't know what your plan is. Know your plan. Are you long-term, short-term? Uh, do you have a, a goal in mind, a dollar figure goal in mind? I have no idea how you trade. And that just shows in the comment section as well, because people are they're trying to do one thing and then asking for advice on that or another thing. And then everyone's sort of confused with who's doing what. So you got to know your plan back to front and don't ask what you should do with your money or what you should be buying. Seriously, you've got to have your plan and, and know what that what are you targeting in the next one month, in the next six months? Not necessarily a dollar value, but what is that you want to get out of this? Next thing, uh, who you get your information from. I don't know. So this comes over to that crossover path of information where you might be watching my channel and you go watch someone else's channel and someone else's channel. So they're telling you one thing, the other person's telling you something else. And I'm telling, I'm talking about this other thing over here. And it's just like all these uh, paths get crossed and then that screws up your thoughts and then also your plan as well, which most cases, a lot of people don't have plans. I hope you do have a plan. And if you don't, go and check out the video I got on the channel on how to structure yourself in that in that regard, like your exit strategy, what to do with $1,000, all those sort of simple videos that you can get information from. So that's the stuff there. So who you get your information from is paramount to how you progress in this point. And then how do you uh, interpret that information and what do you use from it? How do you clear out some of the noise and how do you process that information. This is not what a lot of people want to hear. And I suspect most people probably drop off. Uh, you know, they just want to know, are, are we are we in a bull market or aren't we? Uh, are we about to drop further or aren't we? Am I about to lose 50% of my portfolio or aren't I? It's like there, no one has the exact answer to that. No one has that answer. But you can have some strategies in your plan to defend against it or go on the attack. Uh, next one, difference between USD and BTC charts. I kind of just touched on that earlier. USD charts are great if you just want to look at USD value. It doesn't take into account the risk factor. So I'm just trying to explain this for new people. If you're looking at, say, let's just use Ethereum or, or yeah, Ethereum's easy. Ethereum, BTC. If it goes up against the BTC value, but BTC is falling, it might just hold its USD value. But you could reduce your risk by um, holding uh, BTC. Right. Same thing with ADA or any other cryptos. So 
that's from yesterday's video. We're looking at BTC charts, and I suspect it's not confirmed. It's not confirmed that if BTC rises because we have potentially reset into in in this bull market, we've reset all of the alts. We've gone through all of them. We've gone through Bitcoin, and then stage two is the major alts, and stage three is the smaller alts, and then stage four is all the the junk. You know, the meme coins, the safe moons, the Shiba Inus, all this Ponzi scheme stuff. Then we've cycled all the way through that. We had all of the excitement of those guys, and now that's all dumped as well. And should all the money flow back into Bitcoin and fiat, then we potentially begin the cycle again. And so when we do begin the cycle again, all you have to do is go back and look at the last six to 12 months. You can see what happens to the altcoins. They uh, they drop in their BTC values, but that doesn't necessarily mean that their dollar value will drop. And so when it comes time for the cryptos, the alts to rise, they may never rise back to that BTC high that they once had. That's that's what we're talking about here. So that's what I'm just sort of I'm just reading some of your comments as well. The difference between USD and BTC charts and why one's in, why why they're both important as well. One you're going to get dollar gains. The other is you're going to reduce your risk and then also make your life easier if you're just focusing on Bitcoin. If you don't want that whole hassle of everything, just invest in Bitcoin and a couple of others. That's it, and just forget about it. Which leads me on to the next point: the time frame. Which time frame are you investing in? <clears throat> People buy Bitcoin or cryptos and then say that they are here for the long game. And then when the market drops 50%, they freak the hell out and say, I should have sold. It's all uh, it's all over. It's it's done. We're, we're going to zero. We're never coming back. I can't believe people still think that. Uh, we've seen higher lows throughout the last 12 years on Bitcoin. Higher low after higher low after higher low. And the low at the moment is the major low is $3,100. All right. So... In terms of your time frame, if your time frame is another five years from now or 10 years from now, or you think the whole um, market, like everything in the finance space is going to shift over into crypto to an extreme side of it, then you shouldn't be worried about 50% drops and you should pretty much just turn off, just buy your cryptos, stick to your plan and turn all of the noise off, go out in life and do something that you enjoy more so and uh, just forget about it. Just keep dollar cost averaging into the cryptos that you believe will be good long term. That always changes every cycle as well. There's a few that stick around and the rest sort of die off. So I've had a couple of cycles, we're probably about three, this is the third one now to see which ones are uh, sticking around and which ones are dying off. Litecoin, for example, is probably one of the, the worst that is the biggest known from people looking at the BTC chart. So I think I think I've written that at the bottom here and we'll look at that in a moment as well, you know, at, towards the end of the stream. And then I'll get into some Q&A as well, guys. Uh, so that's a time frame. Know which time frame you're investing in because no one else knows it. Everyone online will be talking about short term, long term. Don't worry about it. Go long. Say Raul Pal, who is a big Bitcoin uh, maxi or actually he's not a maxi, but he's very big into the crypto space uh, with Real Vision, you know, big YouTube channel, 500,000 subs plus. Uh, you know, he looks at it long term. And then you got the shorter term guys who are trading, and I talk about trading as well. That's a different time frame. Uh, a lot of new people want to trade in order to get more Bitcoin rather than just going out and doing something that they know how to do, do a job, start a business, whatever it is you do, earn some money, and then just keep dollar cost averaging into a couple of cryptos that you know and understand. If you're trying to trade the markets, you've just created another job for yourself, which does not guarantee any payments. Um, history of extreme fear and risk reward. I, I will get on to the next point here of the history, but in terms of time frame, that's how I started. I've got two and a half thousand people online here. Uh, 2010 is when I first started trading. So that's 11 years ago now. And it is a very, very tough slog. And I had a, a several, probably about two, three years that was really tough in the early days. And that's all I did was trade. I had the, um, the, the benefit of not having to go to a full-time job and I just taught myself as much as I could and it was a real struggle. I'm not saying it has to be like that for everyone else and some people might find it a lot easier but then once it clicked, it became like you're able to read another language and you can start to see the flow of it. Personally, I don't know anyone that that has happened to in six months or three months or even 12 months and even now I'm starting to see more and more as the time goes on because I look at it every single day and it's like learning a new language. You start to pick up more and more phrases in the language. 
history of extreme fear and greed. I'll look at this one in a sec, but I'll get through these two and then we'll go back to the history. Fundamental belief, long-term. I just talked about that, so I don't need to go over that anymore. If you don't have a fundamental belief in this long-term, then of course it's going to be way harder for you to uh, to stick out any sort of 50% drops. For the new guys, you know, I've been here for, what, early 2017, two and a half years through that bear market, I was still buying in the bear market in your 5,000 Bitcoins, 8,000 Bitcoins, $13,000 Bitcoins. And the belief is it's going up further. And so I stuck through the 70% drops, the 50% drops. And here we are. We're at $30,000 Bitcoin. You know, we hit 65 recently. I never thought we'd get to 60 so quickly, but we stick through it. So if you don't have that fundamental belief, it makes the whole thing a lot harder because you think, well, it's going down. What if it never comes back up? It's like, well, hang on a minute. Like, What's going on in the background in the rest of the world? Even if you think that this is all sort of a scam, there's still a potential for it to keep going up with whatever black markets are going on and uh, the amount of people that need some other sort of payment process. So go and do some fundamentals on the cryptos that you're going uh, getting into. Get a long-term belief on them, and that's going to make the plan a whole lot easier. And that leads me to here, easy versus hard. If you don't have a plan, if you don't have much knowledge or patience, this is going to be extremely hard. But if you've got some sort of plan, it can be super, very, very basic if you want it, want it to be. You, this is a simple plan. I can give you something in like 20 seconds. You have a fundamental belief of Bitcoin and Ethereum, maybe Cardano, okay? They're going to go up long-term because X, Y, Z. You've done your research. Okay, my plan is to buy X amount of Bitcoin weekly, I'll buy more when it dips by 40%. I'll buy less when it's at all-time highs. I've got knowledge because I've got this. And now I have patience that I can see it run out. There you go. There's, there's, a, there's a very, very basic plan. It needs some exit strategies. It needs some um, money management as well. But that's a start. That's, that's a simple start to this plan. Okay. 2,800 online. Um, hopefully, the internet is holding up all, all right. I hope you're enjoying this so far, guys. Let me know. Hit the likes down below. Let's go for 1,000 likes. We've got 2,800 online, doing very well. I'm trying to get this part through because this is this is how to calm, calm the nerves. This is what I've done from my experience, as I've said, because I see it in the comments and I'm like, this could solve that problem. This could solve that feeling. And look, the other side to all of this, and I guess this is what a lot of people come to uh, come to expect from, I don't know, internet guys or whatever, whoever you go to for your news. There are a lot of good people. I get that. But then the other side is people just want to have someone else to blame. And that's, that's, you can see that in what most people want to see right now is who manipulated the market? Whose fault is it? Who can I blame? I should have been rich by now. These guys are going to lose long-term all the time. And they just hold back society. They hold back everyone. It's that's the most frustrating part to me is the guys who love to blame other people all the time. Take all your own responsibility and you will find the answers to the problems that you have and it'll make your life so much easier. You are a well of wisdom. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Look, I, I just go through it because it's a bit, for the crypto markets, it's been here for me over four years now uh, for trading over, like I said, nearly. 11 years. I remember going to my first seminar in August 2010 in Sydney with a company called Safety in the Market, old school traders. It was in the days when there weren't that many fake gurus online with fake trading or watching something of the markets. And, you know, sort of like older guys who have been through many markets. They, the guy that I was learning or the guys I was learning from, you know, they've been through the, um, the 2000s wreck, the 2007 wreck, the guys who created the course, they went through the 80s wreck, the 90s wreck, the 2000, the 2007 wreck, you know, so they've gone through all of those processes. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Bitcoin going to 20k after. No, no, no one can say. No one can say where it's going. All I'm doing is looking at the chart and giving me a bit of a guide of to what may be happening next. With the course, um, so history of fear and greed is what we're going to get to, the third point there, history of extreme fear. The um, the investor accelerator course, which there's a link to in the description down below, the 
it's a video course. It's about six, six and a half hours. Within that course, I've got strategies to exit. The One of the strategies is to exit on breaks of the weekly swing low. So if you don't know how to create a swing, that's the first part. Then you need to have the plan set out. So the, the weekly swing low broke on Bitcoin at $50,000. That was an exit signal. For me, I'm looking at this further long term. So I don't want to be selling out and getting back in. In terms of that, I could take other measures, which we talked about on the channel in April and in May when the market started to rally again. And I was at that point, I was selling some old, some of the smaller, crappier positions because we saw all of the junk just go nuts and everyone was extremely greedy. You know, there's Dogecoin, Shiba Coin, SafeMoon, Coin, all of this garbage was going up. And so that's like a that's a really big signal that new people are making lots of money on paper. That's a pretty like if that signal's just thrown in your face very easily. So I'm not I was happy with my Bitcoin and my ETH. That's fine. In terms of the others, I want to start clearing those out because I think something is coming. I can't be sure, but it's a signal. So I've got to take some measures when I when I feel like that. When I see that, and then the feeling comes again, you're like, if everyone is getting if everyone is uh, making money, who's who's not making money? I don't want to be that person. <clears throat> All right, history of extreme fear and greed. Let's have a let's have a look at that. So this is I've hit max on this. So this this chart is um, fear and greed index. You guys know this from the channel. Alternative, find suitable software, crypto, fear, and greed. Look at this today, 14. Yesterday was 12. Last week, 20. <laughs> Last month was at greed as well. Um, okay, so this chart here, we are now sitting at 14. Yesterday was at 12. Look at the last periods that we had at these levels. This can go lower, okay? This, this just means we're in a relatively fearful time looking uh, you know, looking back on the past as well it can go further but in terms of where we are the we haven't had better times than what i said in my video december in terms of a risk reward december was way at these highs here then we had that correction december in terms of pricing that's the way i looked at it was we were around 17k and we got to the top at around 20k i thought the downside is pretty large compared to where we had come from but from $65,000 Bitcoin, we're at a much better price now. We're at mid 30s, 35K, and it's starting to move up today. So we've had the weekly close. We've had only lower highs since the 14th of May. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think about nine days down. I suspect we'll get an update in the next one to three days. All right. I'll show that on the chart in a sec. But here we are. We're at 12, 14. Who was buying, out of you guys, mention in the comments, who was buying Bitcoin in March of 2020, middle of March 2020, specifically around the 12th to the 29th through to April the 12th. So that, that one month of mid-March to April, who was buying Bitcoin at that time? I suspect not many people at all. I wish. Yeah, exactly. I wish. I wish. But remember that that also, oh, you bought ETH. Good work. Me. All right, good. I'm glad you guys are buying it. <clears throat> yeah, I see. I see some. I'm just reading your comments. Started March 20th. Did we all forget? I wish. He he bought four Bitcoin. Yeah, you know, it was three or four grand at the time in that mid-March. And then it shot quickly to five grand as well. It, was, it dropped to 3,800 approximately, then jumped pretty quickly to around 5,000. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen again. We're going to get this big drop and then bounce back from it. But in terms of a risk strategy, that's it's a lot less risky now, although it feels the most risky to be buying now. This is for Bitcoin. So what we talked about earlier in the stream, if you've missed it, we're looking at, like the video up as well, remember that, guys. We're looking at where the cycle is going to. We look at the stages of a crypto bull market, Bitcoin comes first, then the major alts, then the mid caps, small caps, micro caps, then the dodgy stuff, the Ponzi schemes, the meme coins, all the stuff that makes no sense in terms of the project long term. Uh, but at the time, it makes a ton of sense. You know, it's 
safe moon. It's uh, it's it's solved tokenomics. So we're looking at who's buying March, uh, who was buying Bitcoin in March. Probably don't need any more coffee. That's only a small one too. So personally, the way I look at it, you don't have to follow me. You should, probably shouldn't do exactly as I say. Definitely don't have your own plan. But this is the the the, the grossest feeling time. That was like March as well, middle of March. So as much as it feels gross, I'm going to keep buying fresh Bitcoin now. So this is the fresh time. I was not buying, you know that, I wasn't buying anything in that March, April, early May period at the tops for Bitcoin, for Bitcoin. No way, not a chance. <clears throat> Basically, keep buying. I People say, you know, dollar cost average and just buy anytime. I talk about dollar cost averaging, but I would rather be dollar cost averaging on big dips like this. Because my long-term outlook is that it's going to be a lot higher. And if I want to keep dollar cost averaging um, every week or every month, then I'll just do less as it gets higher. Make sense? Uh, guys, peace. You're going to get blocked in a second. I will uh, i don't know how many times they've posted that. I'll just... Uh, how do I... Oh, there we go. All right. I'm just going to put user in timeout. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. They obviously haven't done any research on Tether either. You can go <laughs> just shut up about Tether. Everyone's getting pissed. Sorry, guys. I've got them off. Um, yeah, look, you can go do research on Tether. It's, it's for now, it's one of the top stable coins. <clears throat> Market is oversold. There is no momentum. Buying volumes are ridiculous. Whenever price goes up, it's backed with low volume. It means there is no other bull run. Don't fool yourselves, guys. Yeah, that's the way I saw it at the tops. Definitely at the tops. The tops didn't have the volume. And you guys were starting to write to me in the comments, like, what about the volume? And then you're sort of, you're starting to pick it up, the volume. You notice on a lot of, um, when I guess what I see online anyways, people don't pay respect to the volume. The volume is the energy of the market, like how much is actually being traded at those times. All right. So we've seen the fear and greed. All I've talked about here is that we've gone lows to the next lows. And you can see the rest of the fear at these at these really, really low points. They have been some of the best times to buy. Have a look at August 2019. What was happening in August 2019? Uh, yeah, that was the first fall from our top. It was around those times, August 29th. Yeah, we had that big run up and then it started to fall and then it fell even further. Uh, okay. Let me show this again. <clears throat> Thank you very much, guys, all of your support. You're sharing up the stream, liking the stream, subscribing to the channel. All right, we're going back to the document. So I just write up, this, these are notes that I wrote up this morning. I think I went through, it must have been like 4.30 in the morning. I had a look at um, the video I posted last night and I was reading people's comments. I'm like, wow, people are going crazy, absolutely crazy. So I started, I got a note out and started writing uh, the writing answers to the questions and then coming up with like this, topics to talk about today. Trading versus investing. We talked about that earlier as well. New investors try to trade the market just figure out whether you're a long-term investor or you're going to trade. Investing is just a word that is used online and um, like for search engine optimization in titles, in uh, what do you call it? YouTube titles, in the descriptions, because that's what most people understand. They, they're too scared of trading. And so they like to call themselves investors and the words that they search for are investing. And then that comes into the titles of the videos that's why investing comes up. But essentially, what people tend to do is actually trade the market. So they have a short-term view. That's, that's pretty much the difference between these two, shorter term to longer term, tiny bit more to it, but th th that pretty much covers it. And so tr trading then is like you'll buy it at $60,000 $60, US for, for Bitcoin. 
it drops 50%. You probably don't know that the market could drop 50%, but there's a lot of history to show that it drops over 50%. Maybe then you've listened to some of these channels about super cycles and how it can never fall more than 40% again or something ridiculous like that. <laughs> no one is like, you can't say that a market will never do something because the market will always show you the opposite. As soon as you say it can never go further, it generally does. As soon as you say it can never go higher, it generally does. So that's a really big lesson from the market. And the market will always teach you and slap you the F around. So getting back to my point about trading versus investing, if your plan is to buy Bitcoin long-term and it goes from 60 to 30, why do you want to buy it long-term? Do you think it is actually going to 100 grand or 200 grand long-term? If that's the case, forget about it. Hold your investment, don't trade it, and then continue to move. If you feel like trading is for you, then come up with a trading plan. You have to be far, far more active if you're going to trade the market than invest in the market. So if you're going to trade, you definitely need a plan. Investing, yes, you need a plan as well. But time usually uh, weathers out any any of the mistakes. Whereas for trading, you're buying in, selling out. Like a lot of people were in the stock market, the stock market dropped. They sold out of the stock market. They came into crypto. I saw that I was on the the comment section of the last live stream, they bought something like Matic that was at all-time highs, Matic dropped, and so they've just compounded their losses on the way down, and I suspect that's going to continue happening. So know what you're doing. Relief rally, I suspect I suspect we'll see a relief rally in the, the, in the coming days. We're at 35,000 now on Bitcoin, 35,300. We've had so many straight days down and are barely a kink in it since around the, what's that, 56,900, 59,500, 59,500. We had a little double top there. So we had barely a kink moving up um, since around the 12th of May, 8th to the 12th of May. And then since then, it's just basically been straight down. So I think we're basically getting exhausted on the sell side for Bitcoin. I've given you my reasons of where I think the money will rotate to after that, how I'm protecting uh, profits and Bitcoin gains, as I've talked about the whole time. Bitcoin is the most important to me. Yes, I love Ethereum. Yes, I love other altcoins as well. But in terms of protecting those Bitcoin gains, that's what I saw last time. I definitely want to protect those. Ben Cohen, lengthening cycles. I agree. Just getting these off the stream. Lengthening cycles. Yeah, I think he's onto something there when he's talking about the cycles lengthening. I definitely was not subscribing 100% to this whole four-year cycle and not even... Um, Bob Lucas, who is the, the main one that I saw talking about a four-year cycle, when he was on Ben Cohen's channel talking about the four-year cycle, Ben was talking about, well, how about potentially we have a, a double peak, you know, a cycle within a cycle. So we get a peak, a drop, and then we go into the next four-year cycle, and that's the left translated cycle, which Bob Lucas talk, talks about. And so that's kind of muddies, in my, my view anyway, muddied the water a little bit of the four-year cycle. But it's just a rough guide to understand where things are going. Like, all this talk about that it has to happen on these dates. There's going to be a top in September or October, and then we get a drop off that. Like, it, it, that's not how markets work. There's, there's, they don't work like that. There's no, there's no one telling you exactly when it has to happen. Um, there's always like a bit of a, a roadmap. That's definitely it for sure. Because I look at the roadmap in terms of the 18-year uh, cycle. And so that 18 year cycle is bringing us through to 2026. Don't get me wrong. This is not crypto. This is the biggest markets in the world. This is the stock markets, the land markets, that sort of stuff is getting carried into 2026, but that could go either side. It might be 2027 or 2028, but it's definitely not going to be next year or, or this year where you see a lot of people talking about a massive market crash that property is going to get wiped out and we're going to hyperinflation. Like that stuff's absolutely nonsense. It just sells really good. It sells great clicks on YouTube. It sells great clicks in the media. Uh, great book sales for Harry Dent. You know, this stuff's nonsense. I'll leave that for another video, but that's the big stuff. We're talking about crypto here. Price targets for a relief rally. Good point. Should we should we see this as the bottom at 30K? You know, I use, I don't have the chart up there. I get it. Our top is at 59,500, or at least our first top. And then we use our FIB, FIB extension, and join it to the bottom at $30,000. So call it around rough guide, 60,000 to 30,000, halfway point. Guess what that is? It's around 45 grand. If we're weak, we probably won't get to that 45 grand. 
That 45 grand lines up with other lows as well. I'm going to leave that on the chart and come back to it. But that's just a quick answer to that. And then we'll have a look at that in a second. Remind me again, relief rally. Haven't I just... No, I'll put it here. Price targets. Cool. Take profits on the way up. Man, I'm only... Look how many more pages I've got of this, these notes that I had here. This is me at 4.30. That's probably why I'm not sleeping, huh? I think it was, it was really good learning for, for myself as well. Like up the stream, nearly at a thousand. Come on, we can do better than that. Thirty-seven hundred people. Uh, where am I at? Take profits on the way up. Okay. Talked about that. Talked about taking profits on Cardano. Cardano, I was following very well. Got the breakout. Got the top again. I posted a video about the top there. Uh, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but the biggest. I have so many biggest things, but the biggest thing when it comes to taking profits is no one wants to hear about it when it's the right time. I am sorry. I am sorry, guys. Taking profits on the way up. No one wants to hear about it. Do you know what the videos were at the at the time of April and, and May? It was it was all just uh, biggest altcoin season ever. Biggest altcoin season ever. Everyone's just we're going up, we're going up, we're going up. We had six six um six months straight up. Six months straight up. We had to expect something at some point. Seriously. And yeah, I had some um, big, uh, big moves. Crypto that went pretty, pretty well. Like Zen went absolutely chaotic. And I'm like, I don't care if this thing keeps going. I don't, I don't. If this, if I'm taking profits, I've bought in loans, sell at high. That's fine. If it doubles again from that point, doesn't matter. I've taken profits. Like, think about that now. Think, think about. And I'm not talking about take profits now. I just saw one from Trudy. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not saying take profits now at all. Okay. But in terms of when I was looking at Cardano and the signs I was seeing, this is just what I was doing. This is what I was doing because of my experience and what I'm seeing on the on the chart. Uh, I did that with Zen, and I don't care if it goes up. So now you guys might um, rebound for the drop question. Hopefully, moving forward, you now see the importance of taking profits, even when everyone else is saying the market's going up, and then you know the feeling of not taking profits. Remember, remember this feeling. If you don't have a plan, at least remember the, the feeling. Now, if the market continued to go up, what happened if you were taking profits at fifty, sixty thousand dollars bitcoins on your other altcoins when they started to move as well, and the market kept going? What happens if it doubled or tripled from that point? How are you going to feel? Take that into consideration as well, because if you miss out on those, what's going to piss you off more? That's why I don't look at taking all the profits at the one time, because there, there's still that possibility. But as we get higher and higher without bigger corrections, it probably gets a little bit less and less that it's going to keep going. Now, should we get this sideways movement like I talked about in yesterday's video and previous videos? Uh, stay under the all-time high for three to six months, something like that. I don't have an exact figure. But should we stay under those highs? Um, I suspect it's probably another solid accumulation zone. And then the next move is going to be pretty decent. And then people are going to be fearful. They might sell out at all time uh, at the previous tops, which creates a double top. So, you know, somewhere around that fifty to $60,000, people might be selling out. They'll see the market take off without them. Then they'll freak out and buy back in. So now they've compounded their losses again. That's just the way the psychology of the market works. Then the market keeps going, going, going. And then what they'll do is pour in more money at the top because they've seen some gains come. And they go, well, I feel safe and comfortable again. Let's keep Let's keep putting more money in. Then that's usually the top because it's a blow-off top because they've experienced it's like, crap, I'm, I'm missing out. The blow-off top happens. It shoots down super fast again. All of the gains that they made, the small gains they made from those profits that they just put in, wiped out plus more. And so they lose again in a bull market. <clears throat> All right. I've done a lot of talking, 45 minutes. I hope you guys have found a ton of value. We're at 1,100 likes. Appreciate that. We're doing very well. 3,800 online. Good work, guys. I'm checking your comments and plus other things. I'm looking there, looking here. Chrome tab. Let's open up the rest of my notes. All right. <laughs> We're getting there. Remember to follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well. What's going on, on Instagram? I don't have much. It's over on Instagram. So the link to Instagram is down below as well. Drop those. And I'll see you over there after this live stream. We've still got probably a solid 20 minutes to get through some stuff, and then I'll get to some questions. Uh, Twitter, as I said, 
drop your email address down below. There's a, a link to our free newsletter. That's for crypto, stock market, uh, property, investing. Basically, we go through the uh, GAN method and then also talk about Wyckoff method as well. So that's in the newsletter down below. Once every two weeks, we'll put a newsletter out. 11 straight days down. Are you guys sick of hearing me talk about that? That was brushed off by pretty much everyone. Retail viewers didn't want to hear my, I'll, I'll get rid of, I'll get rid of my, that sounds a bit egotistical. Re retail, uh, retail viewers didn't want to hear warnings, uh, no demand, rebound, weak sign, bearish signals, 11 straight days down. Don't forget those sort of things. That's counting days, which then counts the the momentum and the energy in the market. How much downside was there? Thank you for the super chats as well, guys. Honestly, you don't have to. I'm going through this and we'll get to some questions as well. Uh, how come Katrina asks, how come the crypto market follows Bitcoin? All the FUD that came out was only about Bitcoin, but all the other coins dropped as well. Mostly because the altcoins are very speculative. Most of them have not um, created any products. They don't have anything. Even Cardano has nothing. There's nothing to them. So it's uh, very risky to be investing in them. So when Bitcoin drops, people sort of fly out of cryptos or altcoins and then back into stables or them. Um, Stress Master, $5. Thank you very much. I lost it. Thoughts on something. I don't usually have like a thoughts on whatever, but thoughts on Chain and Tezos. I, I read Chain is estimated to go up to... Guys, 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 guys. Seriously, if whatever you do, don't don't get involved in these sorts of things. From four bucks to two thousand dollars, no one has a crystal ball to tell you that it's going to two thousand dollars or whatever figure it is. Now, look, I'll, I'll play the devil's advocate on that as well and say, yes, you know, my titles of the last videos are saying Bitcoin five hundred thousand. I'm looking at Ark Invest, for example. They're talking about a potential five hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. They have their researchers explaining why. So on that side of things, look, I can understand that. But they they have their research and they have their understanding of where the market might go to. And then they can alter, um, you know, their research. They're, they're, just, they're just tracking the market. And if they see it going to a certain price, great. You know, these are the reasons. If they don't, then they readjust and say, all right, we're, we're tapering down our price target to 350000 you know. So all basically all with that is just don't get sold on a $2,000 chain link or, or, or anything like that. Honestly, I don't, I don't worry about the end price. I just worry about where the extreme greed gets to. And I say, all right, that's probably a good point. Link right now has got absolutely destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. That one was quite uh, surprising how far it's dropped. And the Bitcoin value of Link is not looking that strong either. So I'm going to have a look at that as well. Hopefully it holds its support. <clears throat> I don't know if anyone's listening. Is, is anyone listening? Do people just jump on live streams and ask these random questions? I don't get it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I need to have a laugh every now and then too. Appreciate it. I see your comments. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, guys. Does taking profit mean tr tra um, transferring to stable fiat and never to return that to the market? Uh, yes and no. You want to take some profits. But then at some point, like if this is your investment bag, right? That's the way I play it because I'm full-time investing. Like I don't go to a day job. This is what I this is what I do. So I'll have a, a huge chunk at the bottom. We rise up. I don't need to get the top. I for for new people, they believe you've got to buy the bottom and sell the top. Like I don't I don't need to sell the top. That's fine. Um just taking chunks out as we go up taking some out as we go down, maybe moving some of that across to stable, to fiat, to Bitcoin. You know, that's my other crypto stable, you know. Um, then with that profits, maybe I've taken out half of the money. I'm just throwing something out there. Maybe I've taken out half of that. What I want to do with that, because I've got it in, in mind, is like I want to buy something nice for myself or my family. I want to take some of that out for savings. I want to move some of that money towards another um something else that I'm saving towards, maybe a house or something like that. 
Now I still have another chunk of that. So this is like a 50% bag. Maybe I'll put 10% here, 10% there, 10% there. Now I've got like 20% of that bag. I'm like, that's what I'm going to use to reinvest so I can keep compounding my bag. That's that's the way I look at it. <laughs> Nobody listens, bro. They just ask questions. <laughs> How do I become a billionaire? How do I invest $5 to make 50 grand? Picked up some Solana. Ecomi. They want hopium. I, I I tend to agree. Okay, back to my my notes here. Gan course plan sell weekly swing lows. We talked about that earlier in the stream as well. Uh, Bitcoin broke through its weekly swing lows. That was a, a signal. That was the time that I was talking about consolidating my crypto holdings. I don't want to be holding all these little shit coins because I'm not I'm not so comfortable with the market. Bitcoin was at certain times showing some slight bullish signs and then got slammed back down. So this is like on a very short time frame going day by day. That's not a long-term investor strategy at all. To be looking at the market day by day, not a long-term investor strategy. I'm just sort of picking what I can see in the market those days and tracking it like a story. You know, we're talking about reading a language. That's what I'm looking at there. Same in reverse now. Oh, okay, so selling the weekly lows and then we just flip and look at buying the weekly swing high breaks. And we haven't seen any weekly swing highs yet. Major alts I covered that weren't looking good. Guys, ask me about VET so much in the last few weeks, so much. And I saw it and said, I don't think it's in those videos. I don't think this looks too good. I know that you guys don't want to hear that. I think it's going to crash VET down. Engine, similar sort of thing. Filecoin, was possibly setting up, but it's broken down heavily. Theta broke down heavily as well. I don't get all these 100%, but I get enough right to continue on. And that's that's all I do. Get enough right, stay. If you're wrong, protect your capital, move on. Don't, we don't have to get like super crazy about it. Uh, also had a, a trade on. So Zen broke out of its high. It moved up and it started to move really hard. And then it got failed at 50% crashed through, I got out of the trade. It was about break even, probably a few bucks here and there. You know, it was a entry above the highs, fell down. And I'm like, all right, this is not going right. Things are starting to fall and break. They hit their 50%. So they're not breaking out as strong as we've seen them. That's a signal. YFI, similar thing. YFI broke down as well. I was looking at that. It's nearly $100,000. It's in a video. It's in a title. I don't get everything 100% right. It broke out. Good trade. Now it's under that price. <clears throat> That's not to say that the BTC side of y YFI is bad. I'm just looking at uh, the dollar value for this particular one. Alts that failed at 50%, Zen. And I was like, that trade's over. A lot of them started doing that. We in the denial stage? Are we in denial stage? What do you guys think? Blow off top? I haven't seen a blow off top yet. That, these were comments from yesterday's video and I wanted to just address them. Denial stage, I think we're still within a longer extended bull market and sure that sounds like denial doesn't it blow off top mm, I'm, I'm still expecting a blow off top because of how um how much bitcoin and altcoins react to emotion so that's why i still expect a blow off top in the future if we don't get it because we go through another you know wyckoff distribution style maybe we get bigger swinging ranges at the top that's another um, that's another Wyckoff method as well. We get these highs and then it drops 40% and then we come back and just miss that top and down. And it just gets really wild at the top. And that's like I talked about, uh, I think it was on the Twitter post just today, is the, uh, the wolves just spreading the sheep. And that's what those wild fluctuations are. And that's a sign of distribution. This time we didn't see that. They kept the sheep together and then basically slaughtered a few, let a few more come back in and then slaughtered the rest. Uh, five bucks. Do you hold powder in USDT, USDC? And if so, USDT, then what do you think about the report, Devin? Uh, I'm fine. Yeah, both. Both USDT, USDC. This Tether FUD comes out every time. Go look at Tether FUD 2018, Tether FUD 2017. Same, same. Same, same, different year. Cantaloupe or honeydew in the next couple of weeks? <laughs> what season is it? Is it, is it rock melon season? We call it rock melon here instead of cantaloupe. Honeydew. No, I like both. Thank you for the, the good question. 
Got to. Got to sleep. 4,000 on the stream, 1,300 likes. Thank you, guys. Hopefully, you've got my Instagram, my Twitter, which are links are down below. Free newsletter once every two weeks. Crypto investing, stocks, property cycles down below. Learn more about that. I'm going to average down on my alts. Hold long. So the alts, so I mentioned it, I mentioned it earlier in the stream, but the alts, the dollar values might be okay. The dollar values might go up. What I think and the way I'm playing it, do what you need to do, is I think the BTC values will continue to drop. So you won't notice it if you only look at the dollar chart. Say you look at Sol USD. I'm just picking one. I'm just picking one. It might look the same on the dollar chart, but the BTC value might drop. And then what happens is they never get back to their old BTC level. This is what happened in 2017. They all peaked in the middle of the run, had huge BTC gains. Everything dropped for about six months. The market came back around November. And then they took off again. And some of them broke their BTC highs, but a lot of them didn't. If they were new in that second half, they would have broken their BTC highs. If they were existing ones from the beginning of the, the cycle, beginning of the bull market, they generally didn't break their BTC highs. Excuse me. So in that case, it's safer, less risk to hold BTC. You just don't get the excitement. You don't get the excitement to run with the crowd, run with the sheep, you know, the school fish and jump for joy and post on Twitter about your, your gains and stuff like that. That's what you don't get if you're holding just Bitcoin. You're doing it boring. You're doing your gains. VET has so many partnerships and solves a unique problem. It seems less likely to crash than the other coins you mentioned that you that that weren't looking good. I mean, it seems less likely in theory, but it's crashed. Like, that's the difference between fundamentals and charts. And I also had a few of those comments. Oh, another chartist. What does this guy know? He doesn't understand fundamentals. It's like, fundamentals are good. They explain what the company's doing. But the chart will tell you what the people are doing. They'll tell you what the emotions are doing to people. <clears throat> All right, let's have a keep going. Have a keep going. Well, I've got English. If you believe in crypto cycles, four stages. We looked at the four stages, you know, the Bitcoins, the majors, the low caps with the micros, and then the meme coins. If that stage, if you believe that is going to repeat in the crypto market, then the, pl the plan says get back into Bitcoin. Four-year cycle, talked about that. Alts can get worse, so more blood. Alts, BTC, that's what I'm looking at. Everything can keep going down. Everything can keep going up. Like it's not going to help in that sense. But in terms of protecting stuff from what I've seen, if I'm going to look into this crypto four stages cycle, then I have to stick to that. All right. I like Bitcoin at these prices. I suspect that alt USD will be okay. They'll probably bounce back at some point. At that point, maybe I'll sell them. Well, not all of them, but you know, I'll go through my plan and sell what I believe I need to sell to balance my portfolio and put a bit more into Bitcoin. But this is trading, remember. If you're a long-term investor and you pick just a few, just stick with it. Don't don't be long-term investing like 20 or 50 different altcoins. I mean, you do what you want. I'm not a financial advisor. That's what I would just mention to my brothers. How's that? Noob expectation versus reality. That's essentially the noob expectation is buy the low, sell the top. So if you start talking about taking profits on the way up, the expectation from the noob is that you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. This thing's going to run. Uh, I suspect not many of them are here. Maybe they are. Uh, sorry, I missed some um, super chats. That's essentially it's what I'm looking at. The expectation, the reality is you buy in dips. You buy like now. That's what I'm looking at. Just like the Bitcoin drop in 2019, 2020. And you don't, you don't always buy the whole bottom. It's like, all right, it's starting to move. I'm going to buy some little breakouts here. Okay, I'm going to hold. I'm just going to keep watching the lows get higher. And then you sort of average into this position at the bottom. Then you don't do anything. You just let it run. Then the market gives some signs. Okay, I might average out, sell a bit. Okay, it's peaked even more. Maybe I'll sell a bit more here. It starts to roll over. We have a sharp correction, 50%. All right, maybe I'll get rid of a little bit. That sort of thing. That's the expectation versus the reality. Reality is that's what happens. The expectation is... I'm just going to buy at the best time ever and then sell at the best time ever. And that comment, like I think my Instagram's full of that probably at the moment. It's every time I put a question up is, um, why don't you just sell the sell when the bear market starts? <laughs> it's like no one knows 100%. But as long as you're making a chunk in the middle, you're going to be you're going to survive. Now is your time to reset. So this is the bull market reset. Look, I'm just calling 
I'm, I'm making up a title here. Bitcoin bull, mark, bull run reset. It looks like it's resetting. We had a good correction. So why not? I think this is the best reset we've seen since... Where am I looking on the chart? It's the best reset we've seen since March 2020. One might argue the last two corrections from January top into the January bottom or the Feb top into the Feb bottom, but I don't think they were very great corrections. I think that January one was probably the best one we've seen in this bull market, but now that we've seen a, a, a major reset. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm looking at in terms of a reset as a crash that I've been waiting for. It's a crash that I've wanted so that I can then structure the plan again, like get back in there. And we're looking at the portfolio with SwiftX, which you can find a link to in the description down below. SwiftX, I think I've got CoinSpot down there as well for the Aussies, but SwiftX is a preferred one. You can use a demo account over there. This is just an Aussie exchange. Otherwise, Binance is down there if you need an exchange, like have multiple in case things go down like we saw last week. Multiple exchanges went down. You need to have backup exchanges. Um, so use those links. You get 10% off with Binance and then 10 bucks for free with Bitcoin on SwiftX and CoinSpot down there. Um, essentially, there's a demo account over there and you can set yourself up a plan. Say you just wanted to set, I'm just going to buy Bitcoin and Ethereum, maybe a little Cardano, and just leave that in the demo portfolio and then see how you track against your actual portfolio. That's, that's one way to see what would have done better. Maybe you don't even play with the with the demo portfolio. Just put a couple of things in there and then see how you're trading versus uh, just a, a stationary, yeah, stagnant portfolio. It's not in terms of prices, but you just keep those few in there. Um, yeah, I like, I like looking at that. That's what I compared to with the previous bull market. And <clears throat> sometimes it would have been better just to buy a ton of Bitcoin and just hold it. Less stress. Reasonable gains, very, very reasonable gains. Predicting anything short term is very difficult, but we do our best with the Wyckoff method day by day. You have to change your mind. If you're doing short term, it's going to change short term. Talking about something on one day because you're looking at it daily doesn't mean it's going to happen in a month's time or even a year's time. Short term forecast is a short term thing. It can change day to day. A long term forecast is a long term thing. That's that's a big difference there because some people take what is being said on that day or that hour and then they apply it to the next five years or 10 years. There's two different things. News is just reporting what's already happened. So any sort of crypto news updates, it's already happened. The fundamentals is what you want to dive into. Say Bitcoin, fundamentally nothing has changed. The news though is reporting that Bitcoin is bad for the environment. You know, it's uh, it's not very good in the green space. But fundamentally, nothing has changed. It's been the same. If not, it's getting actually better with its energy usage because a lot of it is renewable energy. And so the news just reports whatever people want you to hear. Uh, the fundamentals is what you should be looking at. All right. I think we can get on to a few um, cryptos. I've got a few I want to look at here. Thank you for hanging in there. We got there. It was about an hour of going through all of those notes from the previous videos. <clears throat> All right, I see your comments. Let's take a look. If you've got your comments, I'll answer a few more comments now and then we'll, I'll, I'll open up the charts as well and we'll have a look at that. So hopefully that all made sense. I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments otherwise. Um, there are times, I know you guys have mentioned that, there are times where people have just said like, where am I going with that? Essentially, the amount of hate, I guess, when it comes to um, selling or taking profits, it almost doesn't make you want to talk about that because you're like, like, why? You know, I'm doing what I need to do. You guys do what you need to do as well. YouTubers walk you into a bear cave. <laughs> Hopefully not. We close by 535 base signal. What are you on about, mate? No idea. I'm sure most of you don't listen to just random comments in comment sections. You know, there's no um, background to any of those. It's like big deal if it closed below 35. Well, it's relative to nothing. All right. We, <clears throat> we closed 40 minutes ago at 34,655. Here is the range you guys were asking for. 
for someone mentioned targets. I'm just looking at my notes again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Price targets. All right. So this is the price targets. Hey, let's look at some candles for the kiddies. Colored candles for the kids. There's a 50%, around 40, what do I call it? 45,000. Top is at 59 and a half. Bottom's at 30,000. Halfway is around 44. Let's throw a little, I'm going to throw an alert on it around 44 and a half. Should we get a move up? I want to see, I'm doing it roughly, a, four, a break of the 40,000, 40, nice psychological move again. I might just do it just above these highs. That would be lovely. <clears throat> or just above the, the close of this bar or candle and then the open there. So they're my first little targets. I'll put a, <clears throat> what the hell am I checking? I'm talking for an hour straight. That's probably why. Um, these are the lows, 31,000 and 30,000. So we're not that far off it now. We're about 12%. So my alert's going to go at around 29 and a bit. That's that. Cool. So I'm done. Price target somewhere around there, the 44. I don't I don't want those candles on there because it just it makes you think that you've got up days and down days. Whereas when I just look at the bars, it's just down, down, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. The only day we had an up was the 14th of May. So if I measure from there to where we are, it's nine. Today may be the 10th. And if you remember, our 11 straight days down <clears throat> was from the 14th. Wow, exactly exactly a month ago from the previous little peak up. So that was 11 straight days down. That's the 14th of May. Then we are currently at nine straight days down. So hopefully we get a move that breaks one of these highs because then we are shortening the time um, the time count, not necessarily the price count. So that's the first sign. You need a. There's a few more signs to go through in terms of uh, the the market changing direction. So we got 11 days down there. You can see my red line. 11 days down. Currently at this is nine days down here. So we put this at this high. I'm going to get rid of this. We extended to 161 percent. So the price has extended which means possible further downside but we'll probably get some sort of reaction we suspect sort of let's let's you know hopefully we get into that 43k and we just sort of move down i don't think we we'll, would more than likely i don't i don't see us getting this sort of move again which makes sense 30 if we got to 40k and we got a 30k move that brings us down to 10k i i don't think people are going to wait until Bitcoin got to 10K to be buying it up big, especially after seeing the volume come in at 30K like that. That volume that came in at 30K, very similar to the COVID crash low. <clears throat> so that's why I'm, I'm happy this time to keep buying, keep buying. I've said but many times before, even if this goes below those levels, there's 20% loss. We go back to the old highs at 20 grand. That's a 40% loss. I keep it in the record and just say, look, it is what it is. Maybe we get a 40% loss on our purchases now. But I see the upside as being much bigger. And that's what I put in the video. I believe it was yesterday or the day before. So go and check that out in more detail. All I'm looking at here is the best risk reward. All right. 100K gives me about a 200% return from where we currently are. 200K gives us about a 500% return. Okay. The downside, 35K to 20, about 44%. Call it 50% if you want to have a round number. So I could lose 50 to make 200, 500%. That's, that's what you've got to put into perspective. You can do it on any time frame as well. That's all I'm looking at there. Uh, Bitcoin. Do we cover everything we need to on Bitcoin? I think so. I, I've gone through it many times. Massive volume on the 19th. We have extreme fear today. The market could not get to the 19th low. The volume is still big, but we closed higher in the price range 
of the previous couple of days of the 21st. So the market is starting to spin. I'm not saying it's going to 70 grand tomorrow or 50 grand tomorrow, but it doesn't take a genius to see that the, the momentum has slowed to the downside. All of the, the most damning news has been squashed. You know, it's been thrown at everyone. They've basically come out blazing with bad news. They tried to slaughter everyone and this is where they've ended up. Think about it like that in terms of if you need to, if you need to feel it through and that's as far as they could push it any further. So people have not retreated any further. People retreated a hell of a lot here and now they're standing their ground. They're standing their ground at 30, 34,000. That was the close. So obviously we have a last line of defense at 30 and 31,000 and now we're starting to get the, the ground, the defense line moving closer and I just look at those in terms of the closes because the close is controlled by the professionals. That's the old saying. Amateurs control the open, professionals control the close. I didn't make it up. It's it's an old stock market saying. So next, yeah, maybe, look, just playing, mucking around with ideas, 42K, 47K, who knows? One of these areas, we get a nice retracement back. Maybe we don't get that far, you know, something. But what I have mentioned is maybe this takes uh six months underneath the highs all right where am i getting that from time frames measured time frames this is the low this is the high 57 bars i'm using 50 percent because 50 percent is the gan rule and it's been proven for century and more uh, where are we at? 57, half of 57 is 28, 29. That's just over six months. From the top to the next top. Yeah, look, puts us somewhere in October. We looked at this in yesterday's video as well. Just to recap, September through to November is potentially a good turning point. Maybe it's a higher low. That would be lovely. And that's sort of the, the low that jumps us out. Maybe we do a bit of this and this and... Where are we? September, there's the low, and then we start to break those highs. Maybe something like that. But September through to November, that sort of region is where I am looking. I don't suspect we'll just sort of bounce out of here. Could be wrong. That's why I'm buying up now, just in case. But even if we get to this point, I'm not saying it's going to be at 35 grand. It could be a higher low at 45. And so just that move from 35 to 45 is another 30%. It looks like a lot in your portfolio when it goes down, but it doesn't look like that much when it goes up. <laughs> All right, next on uh, my list, ETH Adamatic. Oh, the dominance. The dominance is important too. See, we got that big bounce. Oh, guys, check that out. It was a perfect structure that we followed. Double top, boom, boom, breakdown, and it came all the way to 200%, which is a rule from Gann, William D. Gann from the 1900s, said double tops generally go to 200% of their range. That's the range. 200% and now we've seen a massive bounce out of that 200%. That was another signal around altcoins bleeding out because Bitcoin dominance is coming back. That's that's what I use the dominance chart for as well. So many things. Not They're not difficult things. There's just a lot of them. So if you don't have a plan, how are you going to remember all these things? That was our area that we're looking at. 60,500 was the key. Then this was a weak bounce. Then we got some more volume on the way down. That was where everyone's calling, we're going up, we're going up, we're going to have this big blow off and boom. Because there was no confirmation that that was going to happen. It was just a hope and a prayer. The confirmation was the first time was getting above 60,000. Then we had to get above 64. But it was just all hope and prayers at this point. Let's go to ETH and then work our way down the list. ETH is at 2,100 now. I'm am very much considering some more ETH after this massive crash. I already have enough. 
huge. Uh, big volume. I'm considering it. I'm not saying I'm buying it because I, I at this point, I'd still rather Bitcoin because of the ETH BTC chart. It's big volume, but it's Bitfinex. So I don't, I don't trust the volume that much here. We did break down through the low, but we got bigger volume. I need to find a better ETH BTC pair. Uh, let's move this now. Move this to the high. 50% brings us down to around 5%. So from six to five percent is what about twenty percent? Yeah, okay. From where we are to that point, so I could lose about twenty percent. So it's not that big of a deal for ETH and, and Bitcoin. I suspect ETH will probably do something similar. Maybe we'll have a bit of a relief rally here because ETH has been down many, many days, and I don't see it going back to four and a half anytime soon. We've been down for nine days as well. We had a one day reversal. One day, rever oh, one day correction, one day rally, now nine days down. <clears throat> All right, ETH, BTC, you saw that, what I'm talking about here, ETH, USD. This is just how I look at them day by day. Where are we at? We've bounced reasonable volume. We're on Coinbase, so it's relatively um, good data in the volume. Yeah, volume, 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 cool. Uh, next on the list, ADA. Basically, I'm not concerned with these at this point. Yeah, I thought, and hang on, I will say that I was concerned when we were breaking down past the 24K. I thought that was definitely going to hold, and I really thought the 2K would hold. And so far, it has held because we got to close at 2100. You can see here yesterday's close, 2100. I don't worry so much about the wicks. So if you guys are on candles, you got the wicks. You need to know these these numbers for uh, range measurements, but in terms of where the market found support and strength, I go with the close. That's a big one. So the close is still above these. We're getting a little bit of a bounce back. We'll see what happens. But that again, better risk reward. Like this is this is great. Two thousand dollar ETH. Man, you wanted everyone wanted to buy two thousand dollar ETH back here after they saw it go to four thousand. So then people are buying it up here, waiting for another pump. Now we've got that big, swift, fast correction. They're cool. The bleed out ones are the, are the scary, annoying ones. The swift takeouts are the good ones. Uh, ADA. ADA was next on our list. This one is something we've been calling to a T very well. The flash crash, crazy. All right. I, I didn't get a flash crash in my analysis. I was not expecting a flash crash. A few days down. But what we were looking at was, Sell here, I got destroyed. I got, uh, no, I got profits. I got destroyed in the comments for talking about selling at a at a peak. Then I saw a breakout here, four times, fourth time through, breakout, nice buy zone. Then I posted a video, I think it was 17th of May, if you go back to my channel, maybe, maybe 18th, one of these days. And I was like, I think that's the top there. After our good breakout, we had another breakout here. And then I'm like, all right, this has failed because these ranges that just went straight up and we came pretty, yeah, we just didn't have the support that it keep pushing through after a um, so nice few legs up. I don't think ADA is a bad one long-term. Where are we ADA BTC? Yeah, so we're still sort of in an okay region of ADA BTC because this was the breakout point and we head up, correction. Now we're in this zone of 3,000 to 4,000 sat. So this is the way of protecting our Bitcoin value. Do we want to? Do we want to just hold it in ADA? What's easier for you? What's in your plan? Uh, what else was did we have on our list? <laughs> Excuse me. Matic, Sol, BNB. Let's look at BNB. $266. Now, BNB has been quite weak. It's moved back to its old zone before that pump and then accumulation again and then a last pump. Last pump pump into this nearly $700 level and see this, see that volume. There was a lack, a huge, huge lack of interest at these levels. That's what you got to look for here. Uh, 4,000 online. Thank you guys. Remember to like the stream, jump over to Twitter and Instagram Q and a over on Instagram. All right. A little bit longer in the stream and I'll jump over on Q and A's on Instagram. So make sure you follow me over there. I'm going to organize a giveaway as well. All right. I said I would for 10,000 on Instagram. I've got to do that. So make sure you're following Instagram, following 
Twitter and YouTube and on the email list. Email is down below because I'll check on there if you are on those lists so that I can give you the giveaway. That's how it works. Um, sorry, I'll, I'll check your questions out. I'm just getting through these charts. BNB, and I'm looking at some of these for the first time for the stream. I looked at uh, a few of those before I got on the stream, but for these, BNB uh, B &B back into this zone. Volume, it's starting to show some signs of interest. That's all the volume is. It's interest here now in the $200. BNB BTC though, coming back, coming back into those zones. Yeah, the volume is, isn't up. Look at the volume here. This is on Binance as well. Solid volume. And now we still, we, we've got increased volume than what we do back here, but uh, it's still not enough for me. All right. Uh, next on the list, oh, let's have a quick look at dot. I didn't have that down there, but dot annihilated. I, I am very surprised by dot, but I, I'm not going to be selling dot at these levels here. We're in this zone again, back into the, the previous accumulation zone before the nice big breakouts. I think these were 50% hits. That low, 161, two times. Yeah, up and back, 2x from the low. That was from, yeah. Anyway, I'll move that. Uh, yeah, a lot of volume came back into this. I'm on Binance as well. So these levels, less volume, but we've had a nice close up. Taking out all these lows, crazy times, a $14 dot. But what's dot BTC looking like? <laughs> Not as bad. Uh, that's the old dot data. All right, so my eye is on a breakdown beneath these lows. That would be a weaker signal, I suspect. We'd probably go back to these lows here. From that high already is down nearly 60% on BTC value. Dot ETH. Now, that is a bit worse for wear. So if ETH recovers, BTC recovers, and dot doesn't, then this is just going to keep bleeding out against ETH. So that's that's where you have to weigh up. Is it something that I think will get back to these levels long term and I want to hold it as an investment? Or am I safer just selling out of my dot and just holding Ethereum in Bitcoin? Because this, this is down near lows. I've got my alert set here. Where's ADA against ETH? Or put it into ADA or something like that because we look at ADA on... Um, dot as well. There's ADA dot. So ADA dot has skyrocketed. So Cardano is much stronger than ADA at this point. And you know, it's now peaking again. ADA ETH. Oh, sorry, Cardano ETH. So Cardano is still stronger there. So Cardano is looking okay compared to those majors. So I'm just getting a wider view. Filecoin BTC trending down. I don't see a support in this at all. Not to say it can't rally to this, but I'm not I'm not in it for these small rallies to these points. And I want this thing to give me multiple big multiple returns against Bitcoin. So Filecoin's a little down. File USD. Yeah, that's look, it's got some volume coming at these levels, but you know, maybe get a little relief rally, etc. Is that the low? I I wouldn't be betting on it. But you can see some lows coming in at these old high levels here. So it's got some good volume. Is If it's a coin that's on your list for uh, dollar cost averaging into, definitely be keeping this on your chart now, like tracking it. These weren't the levels to be dollar cost averaging. We had some bounces. That was a potential. And then the fail and then the retest and then the fail, the breakdown through here. This is the psychological game around it. It just... You, you just don't want it to happen, but it's happening in front of your eyes and you just sort of let it go. FTT was another one that I like to look of. That was at 60 bucks now, all the way down in the 20s. That's that's on my radar for sure. FTT, I'm going to look at that. The graph, that's been something that I've been looking at. Small position, small position for sure, but it has fallen into the zone I was thinking here we might hold. Nope, didn't get a hold. It was weak, not not enough volume support. We got a double top. 
And now we've seen close to a 200% hit. See how these work? Double top. We just saw that on the Bitcoin dominance. It works like a treat. Down, down, down. We hit the 150, 160, and I'm looking for 200, but we got very close. Look, 41 cents, and the low here was uh, 50 cents. So pretty close to that level with a, like, the, <laughs> they're so accurate. I love it. Again, analysis, the guy was a genius. Also on my list, uh, we looked at BNB, Link, Link, LTC, Doge, Sol, Matic. Let's speed, I'll speed these up a little bit more. Doge, just for fun, 30 cents. Definitely not something that I will be holding. No, this Doge is a flip for me. Now that I see the potential and how crazy this market can get, I would definitely buy Doge at lows and hold it longer than I did. I had it at the lows from November. Did I get rid of that arrow? Yeah, somewhere in um, November of 2020. But I did not play all of these. I was not expecting it to go that far because in its past, it's never done that, <laughs> especially in its BTC past. It, the max it got was like around 200 sats, and this time it just blew up. But yeah, that's could be wrong. Maybe that's a safe coin. I'm not. I'm not interested in it. Link, twenty bucks. The biggest surprise for me is has been Link. I'll probably say that with a few coins, but Link definitely. Look, it's hit some lows. It's hit the old highs that it set back in August, which was the top of the market before it started to dry up. And now it's bounced, got a little bit of volume come back in. Link BTC though, what I said at the beginning of the stream, we need to get a bit more volume in here and start to create some higher lows. So our first buyers were in this zone, next buyers were in the breakout, next buyers were when we dropped back into our zone, now we're just above it again. So we need to get some more higher lows, probably not bad again, Pr pretty much a good level again. I think looking back in like six, say 12 months time, I don't think... I'm going to be upset buying a $20 link after seeing it at 50 bucks. LTC, worst of the major cryptos ever. I just love giving it crap. It's just garbage. Nothing happens on it. I, I don't understand why PayPal and the rest of them want to use it. It's just nothing happens with Litecoin. Absolute garbage all the way back down against its big BTC values pretty much back to its low, major, major low, because it never really, this was the only pump it had in the entire run from the bottom in 2020 to the top in May. That's it. That's the only run it had. Very big disappointment. 100% from that bottom. If you got that absolute bottom on Litecoin versus Bitcoin, Litecoin, light garbage. Matic. That was a lame joke. Uh, Matic, we're looking here. Getting a little support. See, this is an, an okay pattern. We've got a reversal. Big volume on that bar. Then the volume starts to dry up. One last flush and higher close. So a dollar Matic looks a lot better than 260, 270. That's for sure. That's an easy one. BTC though. Uh, I'm not sold on this yet. On the Matic BTC chart, nice solid hit at 700%. It's dropped below its 50%. I'll probably start uh, getting more interested in it again as it drops below. So the, the the thing here is if not if I'm not buying altcoins, then I'm buying Bitcoin because I'm looking at their altcoin chart against Bitcoin and this could potentially keep going down, but the USD could go up. And so if I'm only holding fiat, then I would have just been better off buying the altcoin itself. But if I'm in Bitcoin, if I'm in Bitcoin, then I can pick up cheaper Matic down here or potentially at these levels, but I'm holding Bitcoin. So I'm making the gains on Bitcoin because this will generally drop as Bitcoin increases, you know, something like that or there. So that's what I've got in mind. I'll put another uh, alert here. As these lows are broken, so that I can get prepared for it, because I just don't leave all of this coin on the on the exchanges and have a have a, um, a buy limit set there. Uh, add alert. That's all I want. Cool. Soul. Soul got wrecked. 
Sol 25, Sol BTC. If I can't pick up something on that, I just go to the other chart. So we're back in this zone here. I go to like the BTC chart. Oh, whoops. Doing well, guys. 3,600 online. We did get to 4,000 something, maybe 4,100, but I know charts aren't for everyone. All right. Big volume off that high on the 19th. That was just like Matic. People were flooding into Solana, I believe. And it's closed above for the daily. It closed above the major 50%. I'm not saying it can't go any, like, it, I'm not saying it can't go lower. I'm definitely going to put my alerts in just under this level. And then again, under these lows. You can see like a subtle low just here. Uh, 52,500. And then that yesterday's bar was 52,500. So double bottomed on that minor swing low there. Still a daily swing. So then I'll just keep some alerts above these high levels. There we go. Cool. Yeah, so I'm not 100% sold yet, but I, I like it from a DCA point now. ETH. So when I say that, remember, remember, please, this could still go. You could still lose 30% of your Bitcoin value, 50% of your Bitcoin value, maybe 60% of your Bitcoin value. I've got to keep this on the radar in case we don't get back to these all-time highs as Bitcoin, well, when Bitcoin takes off again, you want to see that the Bitcoin value is still going up as well. This got destroyed. Serum got destroyed, actually. Look at that. It took out those lows as well. So on a bounce, I might, might lighten the position here. But remember, these are smaller sections of the overall portfolio. The majors are the majors, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum. That's the major part. So this is fun and games to get more Bitcoin and ETH. Theta smashed. Broke down past its 50%. What else was on our list? Uh, looked at it all. Good. Good. All right. I can come across to a few comments. Theta's have been a big one. That was the zone. Look at that. Spiked into it. Good volume here. Four, five dollar theta looks okay. Doesn't mean we can't go lower, but it's much better at these levels, obviously, than these peaks when everyone's sort of FOMOing in trying to get trying to get in before we, we shoot up. And then there's sort of like that fake out, just breaches the highs and then the tank. And then that's where it gets a little bit worrying. Dump, no recovery. I'm going to put another alert at the lows. Underneath the lows and the closes here. Uh, yep, 540. And then another one just here underneath those swing lows at around 370. Cool. And then if we get above these levels, above the 50% and the $8 and that high, maybe that's the first sign. TVK crushed 13 cents now i still don't see a reversal yet but it's got a similar pattern see this yesterday's bar was slightly lower volume and we just have not moved down so a relief rally is coming it is coming from this point all right i'll throw it back onto bitcoin and jump over to your questions 35 2 30 oh wow my neck 35.2. All right. Let's be honest. Comments, comments. Looking at your comments. Don't don't give me thoughts on. Give me a, give me some other questions. Questions, comments. What do we got? Vet. <laughs> Vet was the only one I didn't cover, and I did say I would cover it. So that was the one that people were asking me, and I said, I don't think it looks good. I think this is going to crash. XLM. Wow. XLM got crushed down. Back into the this, which zone are we in? Sorry, I'm going to get to Vet. All right. For a second, and that's back above. <laughs> How'd it go against BTC? See, it's still held into the higher zones here. Higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. So that gives me hope or belief that it's got something else coming. Only because after all of this FUD, it didn't break down into the previous zones. XLM has been a very long lagging coin. It's just making those runs up. All right, VET, VET, VET. 
Eight cents. All right. This was the times when people were asking me about it through here at 18 to 21 cents. And I just looked at that and said, probably not. And it was much easier for me to say it on this because I'm not emotionally invested in it, nor am I invested in VET. So that helps a lot to make clearer decisions when you're not invested in something. That got me 7th of May. That was like, we had big volume and the market did not keep moving. Weak, weak, reversal, nothing, drop, took out all the lows, tried again, week and then it just took out these next lows at 15 cents so is this some is it a time to be buying now what if what can you see we've got similar pattern big volume another big scare yesterday couldn't get beneath the previous low and now it's sitting in this zone here so heaps heaps better time than what we were way up here this was the time that everyone wanted to know about it no volume that just means no demand, no one. This is a very general view of it, but if I could go through day by day with you. But um, overall, no volume at these levels. The only volume that came in was on the spike ups. So the smart money is selling to the dumb money. It's getting this rally up, sell to all the dumb money, take take all of our vet, and then the market drops. That's what the Wyckoff theory is about, the Wyckoff method. That's what you're looking here is the, the volume and the pattern. Oh, I'll leave it at that. But now we got volume coming in at this level where they found support last time. It's not over yet, but it's a much better level with, with actual strength behind it than this. There was no strength to this move. There is some strength to here, but I'm not saying it's the move, but there is a lot more strength here than there. 60% loss from those levels from people buying at 20 something cents. Can it go further? There's another zone here. That's a 50% drop to this zone. So just keep it in mind. The upside is probably big. Thank you for the likes, guys. Twitter, Instagram, daily Q&A. We're going over there later. Vet BTC. I'm going to put some alerts here because Vet is something that I probably might buy this time around. You know, it has that big retail love about it. It's got all this fundamentals behind it that people love about this supply chain thing great. It's still going to drop 80%. Someone said that it's got so much. Oh, that was what they said at the beginning of the stream. I'm like, look, at, it, at its max, VET dropped 80, more than 80% from its peak to its low. So this is probably, out of any time, the best time that you could be buying it in the last month and a bit. Now, VET BTC is another question, another story. Maybe it keeps going and then you're better off just holding Bitcoin instead of VET, even if VET goes up in dollar value. So I'm going to keep an eye on this one as well. There's the low from yesterday. Alert beneath the low, say around 200 something sats. Let's go some alerts above some highs just in case we get a little push. There's around 300 sats. And then I'm going to go below, below these levels here as we continue uh, you know, if we see some further falls. Uh, while I remember, join me on um, the, the newsletter, free newsletter, once every two weeks. Drop your email address down below. Cryptos, investing, stocks, it's all of this trading stuff that I'm going through here. So you can learn about that plus the, the market overall. All right, so free, drop your email address. If you don't like it after one or two issues, you can unsubscribe. Uh, yay, yay, yay. All right, I'm coming back to you guys. Comments. Matic, we've looked at, I don't believe Elon, I, I mean, look, maybe he did put a post, but if people are going to, I said, the, I talked about this in the beginning of the stream. So if you guys are just joining now, who's joining now in the last, say, like five, 10 minutes and who saw the beginning of the stream? Because we went through a lot of stuff for the first hour. Make sure you go back and watch the first hour. Jam-packed content. This is coming off the back of a whole lot of questions that I got from previous video about the, the crash, what's going on, what happens next. This is all the stuff we went through for the first hour. Blow off tops, extensions of the market, the reality versus expectations, four stages of a cycle, 
uh, Wyckoff method, GAN method, looking at weekly swings, areas we could have sold out on, the importance of overbalance in time, which is 11 straight days down. It gave us a signal. After that, there was a rebound, no demand. People were calling for $80,000 Bitcoins. Remember that there was like technical analysis that have 300, 400,000 followers on Twitter were still talking about that. I may have mentioned it once or twice. So I'll put my hand up and say that. But that was after we got past, if we got past the 60,500. I always stuck by that. Retail views, they didn't want to hear the selling. We talked about all of this earlier on. So um, make sure you're going through all of that. All right, I can see your comments. Good job. Thank you. Uh, you guys here from the beginning of the stream? Come on. Where are your comments coming through? We all have worms. <laughs> I'm moving around a lot. I know. I, uh, I need to stretch my back out. I've been at the gym in the morning. I want to go and stretch. No, Fox, don't. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'll say that easily. No, we weren't here. Okay, so if you weren't here, um, that's what I was talking about. The first hour is all of that stuff that you just saw there. We went through it piece by piece in the last sort of 40 minutes or so. I've been going through the charts. So that's people ask, what do I do today? What do you do as an investor? What do you do like for research and studying? Now I've got a whole lot of data from people's questions. So that's pretty cool. So people will comment on the videos. I'll talk about something which I have been studying for the day and I'll research it, make a video on it. Then I get a whole lot of questions from people. I get to look, um, I get to look back on what they were thinking. And then I can come up with these sorts of things. I just write a bit of a, a list out what people need to know more about. And then that can help me improve what it is I'm learning. So I'm going to hear, you know, what, what do I need to focus more on as well? You know, my plan, my, um, my patience, my long-term outlook, what am I looking at in terms of cycling my profits here, there and everywhere, and then put it together and come on a live stream and talk to you guys. Good stuff. Listen. Yeah. Yeah. You can almost listen to the first hour as well. I don't think there's much to actually watch unless you want to see me look at this page on the, on the right-hand side here, but you can, um, yeah, you can definitely listen to the first hour if you've got to be driving and stuff like that or cleaning the house. I don't know. Uh, what do we do here? No, I don't talk much about XRP. XRP did drop a lot. I'll look at the chart. I'm going to share it all over. 76 cents. So it dumped. Nice dump to 32 cents, and it's continued down at, you know, I have a relief rally at some point. I suspect a lot of them will have a relief rally against their USD values sooner rather than later. It's BTC value. Eh, I think it's got some support around 2200. If it breaks down from that, next level is around 1800. Uh, Hundred and seven percent down. I like that. I know that's a joke. Oh, I'm sorry, Richard. <laughs> Everyone was millionaires before. I mean, if you're a millionaire before and now your uh, portfolio is down fifty percent, you still got five hundred grand there. So that's why I'm having a little giggle. You still got five hundred. You're doing all right. You just extend your time horizon a bit. Or go and study something and look at the, like we talked about at the beginning of the um, video, the alts flowing. Where are we going? Bitcoin, are we looking at the four stages of a bull, Bitcoin bull market? That is a joke. You can't be down more than 100%. <laughs> He'll take it the piss. You can't be down, like, someone said that on a tweet, I remember. And they were like, yeah, someone said they were down 140%. I'm like, you guys are freaking idiots. Yes, we looked at that earlier in the stream. <laughs> okay. You guys are really sticking to the 106% down on, on XRP. What did it go to negative and then come back? <laughs> so, 
Jason, what do you think about trading on Binance in Australia for the cheaper fees? I mean, if you like Binance and you got cheaper fees, go for gold. Use a link to that in the description down below. SwiftX is down there. SwiftX is also cheaper fees, but Binance is slightly cheaper. Just depends what interface you like more. Binance has got a bit more of a trader interface, whereas SwiftX is a bit more beginner focused. Honestly, I have both. I have more than just those two. Like, have heaps because when something goes down, at least you can move uh, crypto around. Good night. Carl. Thank you for the super chats. What do you think about the trade about the trading short? Like as in trading short, I think if you have if if you've never traded before, you've never traded long, you're not successful yet making profits, it's probably uh, it's probably not the best to be looking to then to trade short. Build up to those sorts of things. You know, if, if I've got a Bybit link down below, sure, go ahead, trade short, use use the Bybit link. I don't I don't have a Bybit link yet. Although their exchange, I I will work with Bybit because I I think I'm gonna check with them. I think they would um, no KYC. I know another couple of exchanges are KYC. So if you do want to trade, I'm not saying get in there heavy handed with high leverage. That's a different thing. Um, but in terms of a no KYC exchange. There's options. All right. 10, fear and greed now. I don't, when did that change? The previous drop. Oh, we did get 10. There you go. All right, so we just had a reset uh, half, uh, 10 o'clock. Okay. The drop in March of last year, I believe was around eight. We've got an 11, oh yeah, 8, 17th of March, 2020, dropped to an 8. In, in August, it was at 5, August 2019, not 2020. But yeah, it's got to enter in 5. So okay, we're talking about this earlier in the stream. It, it can go lower. All of these things can go lower, but it's a better point than what it was a week ago or two weeks ago or at the top. And that's, we're just looking at, Getting roughly in at the bottom, getting roughly out at the top. That's how to uncomplicate this, this mess. Just keep it simple. Get roughly in at the bottom, get out roughly at the top, get out on the way up. Have you made a profit? Great. You're going to survive the next piece. You're going to have some, some backup money so you can go again. Cool, guys. Appreciate that. Uh, have Palani? No, never heard of it. I'm sorry. Thank you for the super chats, but I'm sorry I've never heard of it. Cool. Guys, uh, I'll see you over on Instagram now. So join us over there. Twitter, if you haven't already, there's a link down below. Swiftex for the Aussie guys. Check that out. All right. Uh, let's try it there as well. I've got plenty of videos on the channel to help you build out a plan. Go and check those videos out rather than flicking around to different, <laughs> I don't know, videos talking about the fear, etc. That's not going to help you at all. Listening to more and more fear is just a waste of time. Um, so I suggest starting to build a plan. Go and look at other videos where you can build plans. That's going to help you reduce the anxiety and get a good entry into the market moving forward. Guys, thank you very much. Like the video up, share it around, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys at the next stream. Appreciate you very much. Until then, you know what to do. Have more fun to get more done. Peace out.